If the matrix below is singular, the sum of all possible real values of a belonging to the closed interval from 0 to 2018 pi is b over 2 pi. Find the remainder when b is divided by 1000. And we have this pretty scary looking matrix right here, full of trigonometric expressions. Before we actually try to simplify the determinant of this matrix, I want to recognize essentials of math for being the very first person to correctly answer last week's challenge with the answer of 981. Let's see if we can get the same answer by the end of this video. To begin with, let's think about what it means for a matrix to be singular. Now, this can mean many, many things, but the one we particularly care about is that singular matrix has a zero determinant. A matrix is singular if and only if it has determinant of zero. So really, what we want to find is the sum of all possible real values of A in this interval that's going to make the determinant of this matrix zero. Now, how do we simplify this? Because obviously just expanding by cofactor right away is going to yield a very complicated expression that I don't want to deal with. So how can we, how can we simplify this before we actually evaluate the determinant? Well, you may know from your linear algebra class, or perhaps even an algebra class, that when you want to evaluate a determinant, let me just make it easy. Let's make it 1, 2, 3, 4. So the determinant in this case is 4 minus 6 or negative 2. One operation that you can make without changing the determinant is adding a column to another column or adding a row to another row. In this particular case, if you add the first column and the second column and replace that with the first column, you're going to get 1 plus 2, 3 plus 4, the second column stays the same, and if you evaluate the determinant, you are going to see that it gets you the same thing. Of course, I'm not going to prove it here why this works, that's for another video, but you can add a row to a row or column to a column like this without affecting the value of the determinant. In fact, you can add a multiple, you can add a constant multiple of one row or column to another row or column. So for example, you can multiply this column by 2 and add it to the first column. So you get 1 plus 2 times 2, 3 plus 2 times 4, so 11, 2, 4, and your determinant is still going to stay the same. So there are various things you can do while keeping the determinant the same, and this is going to help us out simplify this expression prior to actually expanding and evaluating the determinant. So what can we do to simplify this? So let's think about what operation we can make to simplify what's inside this matrix. One thing I see is that sine squared of a plus cosine squared of a is 1, cosine of 2a minus cosine of 2a is 0, and we have plus sine of 2a plus cosine of 2a on the right side, while we have a negative sine of 2a minus cosine of 2a on the left side. So it seems like the problem is really wanting us to add the third column to the first column. So let's see what happens. As stated, this is going to keep the determinant the same. So when you add the third column to the first column, we are going to get 1, 0, and 1. And we are going to have sine of a, sine squared of a, cosine of a, minus sine of a, cosine of 2a, 2 times cosine of a, 1 plus sine of 2a plus cosine of 2a. Now from here, there are many different ways of approaching this, but I will show you the way that I find particularly delightful. From here, let's realize that we have cosine of 2a here, cosine of 2a on this row 2, and when we do 2 times cosine of a minus this expression, minus cosine of a minus sine of a, we are going to have cosine of a plus sine of a. Let me make that clear. So if we do 2 times cosine of a minus cosine of a minus sine of a, that's going to get us cosine of a plus sine of a which seems rather symmetric with the expression that we already have. So let's try it. So let's try doing this row minus this row. So we're going to start with this row, take away this row, because cosine of 2a are going to cancel out, and we are going to have more symmetric expression. So when we do that, so sine squared of a, 0, cosine of a minus sine of a, cosine of 2a. So when you do this row minus this row, we are going to have a 1, cosine of a plus sine of a, 
as we have shown, and we are going to have a one plus sine of 2a. Now you may say, where am I going with this? Well, look at this. You have one sine of a, sine squared of a, and we have one cosine of a plus sine of a, and this may not be immediately obvious, but realize that one plus sine of 2a is cosine of a plus sine of a squared, because cosine of a plus sine of a squared is cosine squared of a plus 2 times cosine a sine a plus sine squared of a, and cosine squared of a plus sine squared of a is 1, and 2 times cosine of a times sine of a is a sine of 2a. So we have 1 sine of a times a sine squared of a, 1 cosine of a plus sine of a, cosine of a plus sine of a squared. And this may remind you of van der Monde determinant, van der Monde determinant, a, one of the more famous determinants in linear algebra, determinant, which states for 3 by 3 case, that determinant of 1 a sub 1 a sub 1 squared, 1 a sub 2 a sub 2 squared, 1 a sub 3 a sub 3 squared is going to be a sub 3 minus a sub 2, a sub 3 minus a sub 1 times a sub 2 minus a sub 1. So this is the determinant of this matrix. And in fact, you can generalize this to an n by n matrix. And in fact, I may make a video on van der Monde determinant and giving you a proof of why this works. There's a very elegant proof that you can use using factor theorem for polynomials, but that's, again, that's for another video. But you may realize that maybe we can make a van der Monde determinant out of this, because we have something, something squared, something, something squared. So let's think about how to modify the second row, if possible, to get the van der Monde determinant. And we see that cosine of 2a, cosine of 2a is cosine squared a minus sine squared a. So it looks like when we add these two rows, we are going to have 1 cosine of a, then cosine squared of a, because the sine of a's are going to cancel out, and sine squared of a's are going to cancel out. So let's do so. So when we, when we do that, we are going to get 1 sine of a, sine squared of a. When we add the first row and the second row, we get 1 cosine of a, cosine squared of a, 1 cosine of a plus sine of a. Then finally, we know this is cosine of a plus sine of a squared, so we, here we have it. Here we have van der Monde determinant. In this case, a sub 1 is sine of a, a sub 2 is cosine of a, and a sub 3 is cosine of a plus sine of a. So we know this determinant is going to be a sub 3 minus a sub 2, or sine of a times a sub 3 minus a sub 1, or cosine of a times a sub 2 minus a sub 1, or cosine of a minus sine of a. And once again, because we want the matrix to be singular, we want the matrix to be singular, we want the determinant to be zero. So we are looking for the values of a where this thing is zero. So we want sine of a to be zero, so we want sine of a to be zero, or cosine of a to be zero, or finally, we want cosine of a minus sine of a to be zero, or cosine of a to be equal to sine of a. So these are three different cases we have to care about. So let's go all the way back up. So we know, so we care about the cases where sine of a is zero, cosine of a is zero, and the case where sine of a is equal to cosine of a. So let's analyze these. And we are going to find the sum of all possible values of a that satisfy this in the interval from 0 to 2018 pi. And this is how I'm going to break this question apart. So we are looking for all the possible values of a from 0 all the way to 2018 pi. And obviously, even if a equals to 0 satisfy one of our equations, it does in fact, but we really don't care about a equals to 0 because we are finding the sum. a equals to 0 is not going to change the value of the sum, so we don't really have to care about that. So one way of breaking this down is to consider the interval from 0 to 2 pi, where we exclude 0 and include 2 pi, because once we know all the possible values of a in the interval from 0 to 2 pi, not including 0, then we know, we know how to find all the values of a from 2 pi to 4 pi excluding 2 pi, because sine and cosine each has a period of 2 pi. So if some value in the first interval, like pi, satisfy one of our equations, 
then you know pi plus 2 pi or 3 pi is going to be in the second portion satisfying one of our equations. So once we know it for 0 to 2 pi, then we know it for 2 pi to 4 pi and so on. And you may say, why am, I why am I doing this? Why am I not including 0 here, not including 2 pi here and so on? Well, if I include 0 here and include 2 pi here, then we're counting 2 pi twice because it's been counted for the first interval and it's been counted for the second interval. So I'm doing it like this, open on the left, close on the right, so each number gets counted once. Enough about that, now let's actually try to find the values of a from 0 to 2 pi excluding 0 that satisfy one of these equations. Sine of a is equal to 0 gets us the solution a equals to pi or 2 pi, cosine of a is 0 gets us the solution, a is pi over 2, 3 pi over 2, and of course sine of a is equal to cosine of a at pi over 4 and 5 pi over 4. So what's the sum? What's the sum of all possible values of a? In the first interval, pi plus 2 pi is 3 pi, pi over 2 plus 3 pi over 2 is 2 pi, pi over 4 plus 5 pi over 4, that's 3 pi over 2, and when you add up every single one, that's 5 pi plus 3 pi over 2, or 13 pi over 2. So for the first interval, we get the sum of 13 pi over 2. Now, what about the second interval? Well, in the second interval, each of these solutions, so each of the six solutions, is going to be incremented by 2 pi. Each of them plus 2 pi is going to be the solution for the second interval. And we see that that's going to be the same thing as 13 pi over 2 plus how many 2 pi's? 6 of 2 pi's, so 12 pi. So the sum for the second interval is going to be the sum for the first interval plus 12 extra pi's. And we see that from 4 pi to 6 pi, we are going to have 13 pi over 2 plus 24 pi, adding another 12 pi. So we have this arithmetic sequence. And how many intervals do we have? Well, each interval is of length 2 pi, and we are going all the way to 2018 pi. So we have 1009 intervals, we have 1009 intervals or 1009 terms in the arithmetic series. And all we want to do is add them up. And as you know, the sum for the arithmetic series is n over 2 times 2 times a sub 1 plus n minus 1 times d, where a sub 1 is the first term, n is the number of terms, in this case 1009, 1009, and d is the common difference. That's the common difference, and of course, common difference in this case is going to be 12 pi. That's what we are adding each time. So what's the value of our sum? n is 1009, once again, so 1009 over 2 times 2 times a sub 1, which is 13 pi over 2, 13 pi over 2, plus n minus 1, 1008, times d or 12 pi. And what do we want to do? We know this sum is b over 2 pi, and we want to find b mod 1000. So we know this thing is equal to b over 2 pi. So let's try to simplify this just a bit. So we have 1009 over 2, and we have 13 pi, and we also have 1008 times 12 pi. So we have plus 1008 times 12 pi. I'm just factoring pi out. So here we have it. Here we have b, that's our b, over 2 pi. And we want to find b mod 1000. So let's look at b. So b is 1009 times 13 plus 1008 times 12, and we want to take this mod 1000, which is 1009 becomes 9, 13 plus 1008 becomes 8, times 12, and what is this? That's 9 times 13 plus 96, which is 9 times 109, and when we multiply this, we get the final answer of 981. So our final answer for this question, this was one of the longer questions, is 981.